we're, we're really um, lucky to have uh, Nathan do this presentation. Uh, not only does he come from an IT background uh, and quite extensive, um, he is himself an actor. Um, so it's the perfect combination um, to be able to present this information about um, the necessity, if you're going to be a professional actor, of having a good professional website for yourself. So, um, Nathan Brimmer. Thanks. I can't remember last time I had somebody applaud for me. Appreciate it. Well, thanks. I appreciate y'all coming today. Um, just a couple things. Um, if you brought something to write with, great. You probably won't use it too much. This will be available to you. Um, I'm not going to. Uh, Probably, I mean, if we share some other information, again, the webcast will be available, and I'll also edit the presentation afterwards based on some of your questions to, you know, make it a little bit more useful, and that way you don't have to spend all your time writing. That being said, if there's something that you really want to get done in the next week before I get all that done, <coughs> go ahead and write it down. Um, Let me I'm, interrupt you. Yeah. Is that on? Yes. Okay. Sorry. Yes, absolutely. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Appreciate that. Now you can make me go take a look at it. Yeah. Is there a film in it? Yes, there it is. I, thank you for your concern. Um, out of the, the list of the 28 people who were signed up, I think we got four submissions for websites you know, that people had. Um, just a quick show of hands. How many people actually have a website that they've created themselves? But that they created themselves, aren't they? No, I <laughs> so so maybe that's the, the four people. I think everyone pretty much. All right. So is there anyone who submitted their site who doesn't want me using it as part of uh, the presentation? If, if, if so, you'll get another chance when I bring it up on the site <laughs> to go ahead and pass through it there. So all right, let's uh, let's go ahead and get started. I promise that this. It's the only animation inside my entire presentation. Um, because, and I'll get into it very quickly, I'm into keeping things very simple. Uh, one of the main things that um, we've seen over the last uh, 20 years of our time on the web is that no one is wowed by the web anymore. Um, so stop trying to wow them with anything besides your content. Um, that's what needs to really happen. Um, so let's get into it. Why are you here? Why do I need a website? What needs to be on my website? And how do I build it? And we're going to cover all of that today. Um, I'm going to show you if you are well prepared uh, ahead of time with your content. I'm going to show you how you can get a website up in less than 30 minutes and, um, and published and all good to go. So it's all very possible. It all starts with organization. and. Um, I mean, I'm sure that uh, the people in my life would really enjoy it if I actually practiced that a little bit more. <laughs> but when it comes down to the information that's out there on me, um, I make sure that it is extremely well organized. Because uh, it's the one thing I have control over. Branding and engagement. So let's get into organization. There's all these different links, all these pieces of information that are out there about you, know, IMDB, you got your resume up on Actors Access, now casting, wherever your you know, agent has to submit something. You have your agent website that you want to link into. You got your photos, social media, um, your demo reels, and maybe you're going to keep a blog. Maybe that's your cathartic way of sharing your acting experience without uh, blacklisting yourself from movies. The reason it's important to have your own website is this. It's the only place you get to control all of that content. Every other piece that's out there is either displayed with other content that you don't have control over. You go and put your something up on your Facebook feed. Well, that's great. You just put that up and your information came up in the middle of six cat pictures. That's great. Um, but it's, it's not giving me the mindset of what I need to see. And it's distracting. Um, you want to make sure that you have control over everything that that person sees. So it's all about you at that time. Branding. Again, the one opportunity for you to control any of the information. And this is just, this is like your basic marketing class. This is no <laughs> different. Um, you know, you have your brand building, 
the personality, presence, associations, equity within that, you have to look at yourself as a commodity. It's not always the easiest thing to do. I'm a unique individual. You are. You are. But you have. You are a product. Okay. Um, sometimes you get treated like it on set. So, uh, but you have to find a way to embrace that and still be able to show your personality. Um, and I promise this is the all this we just rifle through it and then I start picking your sex apart. And that's where we slow down a lot. Um, the content that you put out there. Whether it be something about your bio, uh, whether it be your demo reel, whether you're doing a dramatic reel or comedy reel, um, you are trying to develop an emotional bond with the person that's seeing it. It can be subtle, and it most often is. But just like every, you know, Crest, when they go and they do their branding on their website, somebody put a lot of time and effort into figuring out why you should buy Crest. Well, why should I want to learn more about you? And, um, and you have to figure that out. Uh, it's not the easiest thing in the world. You'll test a lot of different things. Um, we're going to touch briefly on uh, some pieces of you know, things like Google Analytics, being able to really learn information about your website, stuff that you may or may not be interested in. But we'll give you that information. And uh, aside from this uh, presentation, we'll go ahead and um, provide content uh, that you can take a, a deeper dive into if it really interests you. Um, people like to run A-B tests to see, you know, is this page working better than this? I put this picture here, is it working better than that? I'm going to give you all those tools, not all in this presentation, but you will have them at a click of the button through uh, the Film Foundation's website. But just like everything with your acting, that's the whole point, right? It's the trigger response from the person who's viewing your content. Otherwise, the bounce rate is 100% on your page. They come on, they see the first thing, and then they click off, they're gone. So the key is you want to make sure that they're at least clicking two, three pages in to learn a little bit more about you. Um, that can be done through mystery, or it can be done through, this is interesting content. I'm not going to be able to say this is the right way or the wrong way. A lot of it's going to be just based on what catches them first. And we'll show some examples of what um, catches people. and. I'll ask you, too, because you'll see that uh, it's something different for everybody. And we'll get a little bit into uh, per uh, persuasion architecture, uh, which is a concept where I can write a paragraph, maybe my biography, and I can find eight different mechanisms inside there to attract different kinds of readers. The alpha male and you know, the, you know, the guy who sits at home and plays some you know, computer games all day. I can find the difference between those two guys and give them the same con the same content and attract both of them to it. Uh, presence. Social media. How many Aaron Alexanders are are out there? Right. There's a ton. How many Nathan Brimmers are out there? Probably not as many, but I'm still battling with a few of them that are out there. Uh, but this is an opportunity to take ownership of your name or whatever your SAG name is. Um, and we'll get into that a little bit. But um, it's about taking control of all these mediums. And I'm not saying, because it can look overwhelming and that you're going to spend hours and hours and hours on all these pieces. I'm saying if you spend a little time on each one and you stay organized, it's not a cumbersome process. You don't have, it doesn't have to be. Um, and I realize that everyone has other things going on in their life. Um, if you control your content over all media, you incre increase your legitimacy in the eyes of others. Um, when someone looks up Nathan Bremer on Google, it's me, all first page, everything, because I control all my content. And I've made sure, very hard, to make sure that all of it is being pointed in and linking to one another. And it didn't take a lot of effort to do it. Set it and it's almost part, a lot of it is set it and forget it. And um, it's all about how you want to manage it. I probably spend a little bit more time uh, online than some people. Uh, just come from the engineering world, it was kind of just where I was all day. Uh, so it kind of became a part of me. The advantage there is that I can play different roles on different media. And from my branding, that's how I've chosen to do myself. You want the PG-13 version of Nate Brimmer, you can go to Facebook. You want the R version, go to Twitter. You know, and finding that mix because as much as I 
really love all the content. I don't need my nieces and nephews seeing what I post on, on Twitter. So, um, but that's again how I want to brand myself. And I'm not pretending to be somebody else. I have a very dark style of humor in my writing and, and that's what I want to share with the world. So you just have to figure that out. I'm not asking anybody, and that's the main thing too, I'm not asking anybody here to be something that they're not. Because so, someone's going to see through it. You get the first day on set, you know, that'd be like me going in and saying, like, I'm 150 pounds. I'm not. I'm 200 pounds. So don't put that up in your profile because someone's going to bring you in and be like, yeah, thanks for your time. We'll see. You know, and that's going to be the one audition you get. So brand building. Um, a lot of you have already been on films, TV shows. You're, maybe, you're, maybe you had a, 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 a SAG paid role. Maybe you, had, you were just a background. It doesn't matter. I'm not asking you to also say that you did something more than you did. But not mentioning that on your website and finding a way to link yourself in, that is a complete missed opportunity, okay? Giuseppe and I spent four months on A Million Ways to Die in the West. Why wouldn't I share that information with her? Find a clever way to name drop, but it's not for the fact that you're trying to be like, oh, look who I worked with. But when someone looks up your name, and all of a sudden in, in Twitter, like now, if you go and do a drop down, depending on who you are, where you are, you put my name up, Seth MacFarlane comes up next to my name. Because there are enough places out there where I was in a million ways to die in the West, and me mentioned with Seth MacFarlane, that it just creates that association. So the perception, people will only go so deep to see how in what capacity you work with this person. Um, but again, it's up to them to look into it. I'm not asking you to like lie and say, you know, you went out for drinks after you know the shoot, but um, but it is a missed opportunity. So think of that when you're doing your brand building. The people that you've worked with that you want to be associated with. Now on the other side, maybe you worked with Steven Seagal on Force of Execution. You may not want to mention that. Um, so uh, <laughs> that might be a personal preference. Uh, a real good friend. Uh, so. <laughs> Uh, other things, genres that you are typically in. How do you want to brand yourself? What are you good at? Um, I'm, not, you know, I, I'm honest when I'm saying I'm not the most versatile actor in the world. I'm really working on these things. But also, that's fine. Keep working on it. And as you develop those skill sets, add them to your, you know, your repertoire. But really try to, I'm not saying completely pigeonhole yourself, but figure out what you're good at right now. And that's what you should really be sharing with people. Um, because if you're not good at it, they're going to let you know. Uh, Physical attributes, we talked about it briefly. I'm not going to try to say I'm 150 pounds when I'm clearly not. So don't, you know, whatever, whoever you are right now, that's what you need to. I've got the New York City Marathon coming up. I want to drop 15 pounds, but I can't sit there and say I'm going to be, I'm 185, I'm not. So um, everyone's going to know it. Uh, so we've already touched on that enough. Equity, something that's tangible versus intangible. Um, talk about briefly physical attributes, your experience, uh, your, your uh, whole IMDB you know, record could be up on your website and people are going to see how long you've been in the game. They're also going to see if something's legit, if it's not legit. Uh, but again, that's something that is fairly tangible. If you want to talk about in your biography the time that you spent in Juilliard, probably a good idea. Um, to, to do something like that. Those are things that are tangible. Things that aren't this intangible quality, perceived quality, being organized, having your stuff together on your website, having you know, every, all your ducks in a row, gives you this competitive advantage. So when I'm looking at two people that I'm looking to cast, I wanna, I, typically, I want to go with the person who's more well organized. It's probably going to translate into the time that I have with them on set. They're chaotic and in this world, I may think that they're, and that's again, perceived quality. So you're giving yourself a real disadvantage if the only mechanism I have is, and I'd even go out and say, it's better to have no website than a poor website. Uh, and we'll get into some examples there. Engagement. How do you want to get into uh, the heads of the people that are uh, you know, t checking you out? How do you want to engage your, your people? Um, you know, uh, for right now, for me, I'm a, I'm a music, musician, so I've got you know a new single that we that we just dropped, and so I've kind of switched modes a little bit and realized that that's the 
angle I'm going to play. And so when it comes down to Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, all these you know, venues, all of it has a fee. And so when I'm on set, when we were on set for a million ways, and the things that I was allowed to share, again, on all the mediums, a theme. Because it's also based off the time that was going on, whatever was going on in your life. If you're scattered all over the place, people are going to, I mean, some people might see through that and go, wow, that person's really interesting. Some people are going to be like, what does this person do? I have no idea who they are. And I think that that's something that you want to try to control as much as possible. And you might be that person who's all over the place. And that's okay, too. But you can give them really uh, well-organized thematic pockets. And we'll take a look at that. Simple stuff. You've all been on websites. You've seen what's going on. I'm catering this to actors, but um, you know, if you do other things, you do production, you do uh, music, things that are, I would say, entertainment-based, then uh, just have you, you editing, right? Video editing, right? Related to industry related. So, and, and I can't stress that enough. Really try to make your site all about this industry. Don't don't try to cross over in three different platforms because people are going to get lost and go. Uh, you know, until you are more well known for those pieces, keep them separate. Um, home page, resume, uh, which is typically just your, uh, you know, whatever you're walking into your auditions with, uh, your headshots, your bio, proofread bio. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's painful sometimes to uh, see actors who haven't spent the time. Give it to somebody else. I give my content to somebody else. I am a grammar nitpick. Um, and, uh, and I don't trust myself. So have someone else take a look at it. It's OK, and there's no shame in that. Uh, demo reels. Um, I put that in a must, and we'll, we'll get into that. Um, I say must. If you have a good one, then go ahead and put it up. Um, contact information. If you have an agent, they're going to really appreciate it if somebody goes through them to, uh, to get a hold of you. Um, and. Uh, you certainly want to endear yourself to your agent who's submitting on your behalf. You want them thinking of you. Uh, up to you. Again, what do you want to manage? Do you want to manage yourself on social media? Uh, Facebook, Twitter, do you want to tie it all in? And of course, all of these, uh, as, as most of you probably know, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, I mean, they, they all have mechanisms. If you just want to update in one place, fine, go for it. That's what you want to do. And it can be that simple. Um, and I encourage you to do that if you're comfortable with the content that you're putting out, particularly if you know it's all industry related. Um, at the same time, um, there are some of your fans, we'll say, that, uh, yeah, I know, I don't have any either. Uh, so, <laughs> but you, you, the people who out there who are engaging your content, who want to see behind the curtain a little bit, right? Some people really think it's kind of neat when they, you know, see something that you're doing at home or whatever. I mean, I don't say inundate them with that because you know, I know most of us are just, you know, in this big Albuquerque circle here, uh, you know, looking at each other's websites. But this is an opportunity for us to start branching outside of this network as well to start attracting interest to this area too, which is um, obviously growing, and um, you want to make sure that you're a part of that. You're going to hear this all the time. You ever heard this before, to have a clean website? Anyone heard that before? Um, so what is a clean website, right? It's easy to read. Uh, it doesn't, it's pleasant to the eyes. Um, you have well-defined spaces, clear intention, and quiet. Don't ever, 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 ever auto-start anything on your site. I don't care what it is. I don't, think it, I don't care if it's the greatest video that was ever created in the history of mankind. No one wants to have that option taken away from them. Um, and I, if you're a musician, and you want your music to start playing. Don't. Uh, unless you are very well established and people know that's why they're going there and they have that expectation, that's fine. But where this is an actor's thing. So if I would say if you branch out in that area, then stay, then, then just give them the option to click through on it. Um, the well-defined spaces is something that we're gonna spend a lot of time about. Just like with the social media and giving your viewers this real uh, uh, thematic focus, that's exactly what we want to do on our website. Each piece of content, and I'm not just talking about having your headers up top, here's your resume, and here's your, I'm saying within each pocket, 
you want to make sure that it's very clear what you're trying to share with them. Because um, they'll leave. They'll leave. Unless it's my mom, you know, checking out my page for three hours, which I really appreciate, and bump him up. Uh, SEO, people probably have heard this a lot, right? Search engine optimization. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on it because you can spend a lot of time on it. Um, but this is just basically the methodology where uh, organic search promotes uh, certain content through your search engine. Um, and a lot of the tools that I'm going to be suggesting that you can use to create your websites are very SEO friendly already. It's great because it's one less thing that you really have to focus on. Um, but we're actually going to spend a few minutes as we get into this and as we're building a site together um, showing you exactly uh, uh, the advantages of SEO and uh, we'll uh, get at that. Okay, actors who already made it. So this is Leonardo DiCaprio's site. Um, it's tough probably in the back to see, but over here, um, this is like the latest news section, and he's got his little Facebook, Twitter, and then, you know, uh, I think that's a mobile version of, of his app there. He's got his Twitter feed here as a panel, and then, you know, he's got his projects that are big. This guy can do whatever he wants on the website. Everyone knows who he is, but that being said, he does have engaging content here. If people want to go learn about Leonardo DiCaprio's body of work, they're going to go to Wikipedia, they're going to go to IMDb, they're not coming to his site to, you know, check out what's eating Gilbert Grape. They're going to go somewhere else for that information. Um, did I date myself by bringing that one up? Uh, actor show, I made it. I apologize, it's, it's, it's uh, very light, and I'm actually, I'll dim this for one second. Okay, this is Seth Rogen's site. This is horrible, okay? But Seth can get away with something like this because we all know who he is. Now, I'm also going to go out on a limb. I mentioned this to the people of the Film Foundation. I'll be honest, I really don't know if this is Seth's site. This is SethRogan.com, though, also. But that being said, when you look up Seth Rogan, even if this isn't his site, he, he doesn't have control of his name. So not a real big problem for him right now, uh, but it can be a problem for us. So. Uh, You'll see a variety of colors. The reason, I mean, you should probably be able to see the font that is kicking on this site, and you can't. So it's a little uh, cumbersome. There's a lot of information. It's not well uh, organized, and it actually does have uh, related searches with ad stuff on it. So that was the thing that kind of threw me that. But again, these are people who have made it. They can get away with it.